I'm Rory, and I just want to read today from 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing us for eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. On the 17th of August, 2021, at 10.25 a.m., God parted the curtains between earth and heaven and called Ursula Elaine Enslin home at the tender age of 48. It was six days before her 49th birthday. In the natural, this does not make sense. We are talking about someone who had a global impact on the world. If not through her students who have gone around the world to her funeral, that was literally watched around the globe. She has so much still to give and to make the world a better place, and now she has gone to the unseen. It is so easy in a case like this to lose heart, as it says in that verse. It is different when the person is 100 years old and they lived a good life. But to be gone in the prime of your life, helping to shape biology and teaching in this country, influencing pupils so much that they actually change their careers and go into the biological fields. So how can Paul say, don't lose heart? But he goes on to talk about how that we are wasting away. I saw that with Urshi. She had lost a lot of weight. In fact, some nurses had to look twice when I showed them some photographs of us from years ago. Her face was the same, but it was different from all the weight loss. But then he goes on to say that our inner self is renewed. I saw this with Ursula and I. It was hard to watch her in such excruciating pain, but her spirit was renewed. Her faith remained strong. In verse 17, it speaks of a momentary affliction. Even here, it was momentary. Urshi is now in the presence of our almighty Lord, God and Savior. That pain is gone. In that month in ICU and G ward, I can honestly say that there was not a part of her body that was, at some point was not in excruciating pain. It is hard to watch your other half, as it says in Genesis, because we are one, in such pain and wasting away to the point <clears throat> that they literally have like no calf muscles actually left. But then, when we are about to give up with that passage of the verse, we are hit with verse 18. And verse 18 says, As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen, for the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. That does not take away from the hurting that I am experiencing now. I wake up every morning between 3.30 and 4 a.m. and look at her empty pillow, being alone in our room at night and wanting to discuss something and the only ones there to hear me is our dogs. I don't have the answers on why this happened to us. I know that I have peace about it. I accept it. I have no anger towards God or to my fellow man. I sit here writing this message and weeping. But through it all, we look to the things that are unseen. God is in control. All praise be to him. I will praise him in my pain. When it is so hard, I will praise him. I will keep my focus on the goal, to raise our children and to complete her missions that she started where I can, to help build the church, to ensure that we all get to see Urshi once again as she is waiting for us. I know that that on 17th of August, when Ursula was welcomed home to heaven, she heard those faithful words, well done, my good and faithful servant. She has left a legacy and I intend to live up to it. And also then hear those words when she welcomes me home. Oh, I look forward to that day. So finally, keep your eyes on the unseen, the eternal. That is what matters in the end of the day. A day before his wife died, uh, my sister died, her name is Jenny. Uh, she lay, she was Jennifer van der Volt. Uh, my older sister, uh, she died this year, and we've been doing a series which is entitled uh, The World is Upside Down Place. And, you know, you can't go visit your sister when she's in ICU because um, of COVID restrictions. And, uh, yeah, the world has really become a very strange place, and this has been quite a tough year for us. Um, I had a miracle son that was born in the beginning of the year after 13 years of, 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 of having no children. 
Uh, we had a miracle son, and so the year started out great. And yeah, and then uh, we had COVID that came and hit us May and June. Uh, myself and my family got super, super sick. And uh, we were sick for about a good two, three weeks, myself and my wife and uh, my two kids. And uh, yeah, then all the hit the family, went through my, my wife's side, went through uh, my side. And my older sister didn't get it until after we had recovered. And uh, I remember her getting sick and then saying to us, you know, am I going to die? And I remember laughing and saying, no, man, you're not going to die. And I'm thinking, why are you overreacting? And I remember when I gave her some, some medicine and I, and I said to her, don't worry, you're going to be fine. Um, I need to realize that uh, yeah, that wouldn't be the plan and that um, I wouldn't see her again after, after a month being in ICU. And so, yeah, my older sister, she passed away. Uh, she was a, a year older than myself, 43, when she died. Uh, she left a, a daughter of 21, a fiancé, which never got to marry her, and then obviously us as the family. And, you know, I remember sitting down thinking about this, and um, for a good month, um, our, our members of our church, my cell group, um, we went numerous times to go and pray for her. We saw her um, in the hospital. She was on a ventilator, and uh, she, she was sedated. And we would pray for her, and she would open her eyes, and we would tell her that she's going to be fine, and she would, she would cry as we would tell her that a tear would come out of her eye. And, uh, yeah, we really believed that, that God was going to heal her. And uh, I remember when she died, uh, it, it hit our family, and uh, we, we, f we had those situations where it didn't, make sense, you know, we, you know, where was God in the picture, you know, what, what was happening here, and uh, why did we pray, and he didn't heal my sister, but he's healed other people, and uh, I remember grappling with this question, and, and knowing that God is still good, because God's always God, mm -hmm. and uh, my mom actually got a, a, a visit from one of my, my niece's friend's mom, and uh, she had a vision of my sister two days before she died, and she saw my sister dying in the dream. And in the dream, a lady came over to her and said, look, we mustn't cry anymore and you mustn't weep for her because my sister is actually in heaven and she doesn't want to come back. She's in a better place. She's waiting for us. That gave my mom some comfort. She was very happy to hear that. Um, they were looking through some family albums and when she looked at a picture, she saw the picture of my cousin, which had died two weeks before that of COVID as well. And she said, who's this lady? And my, and my mom basically said, that's, that's my niece. She died two weeks ago. She said, that's the lady who came to me in the dream. And told me that uh, Jennifer's in heaven and that you mustn't weep for her. And you know, this lady had never seen my cousin. Um, she, my cousin came to in a dream. We weren't sure of my cousin's salvation. And there my cousin is and we believe she's in heaven. And uh, she got a supernatural encounter from the grave. And Romans chapter 8 verse 11 says, And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because his spirit who lives within you. You see, because of the Spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of us, we have hope beyond the grave. You see, if you have your hope in anything other than the hope of Jesus, your hope dies with this life. And you know, it can come in a time where we no one expected it. You can die at an early age. Um, everyone can think you can recover, and the next minute you can be dead. And so hope in this life is nothing to hope for, but hope beyond the grave, the living Spirit of God living inside of you that raised Christ from the dead now lives inside of you. And, you know, God gave us a message just to reaffirm my family, to say, you know what, um, you may not understand, but, but she's here with me. And uh, that, that just gave us the affirmation that we'd see her again uh, and the belief to, to continue to believe in so that we can see her again one day in heaven. And so I just want to share that uh, in, the, in the midst of uh, really hopeless situations, um, there's always hope and the hope that goes beyond the grave. And uh, God is so powerful. You know, we prayed for my sister to be healed and uh, God showed him the revelation. He said that she was healed. She was healed eternally. Never to suffer again. Um, never to be in pain. She wouldn't have to worry and be f fearful of something taking her life. So God healed her eternally. And so I just wanted to share that with you because God is always God. He's, he always remains on the throne. And um, if you trust him to be good and you put your hope in him, um, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will raise us to, to life one day. And... Uh, our family members won't be walking around in pain. We'll be walking on streets, paved of gold. We'll be able to spend time with Jesus, ask him all the questions we never understood before. And uh, yeah, that's what keeps me driving. That's what keeps me um, striving. And uh, that's why I still believe and lead people to Jesus even today.